Thank you very much, Klaus. And now I will invite uh, Paolo Lemos to give his presentation on uh, risk assessment and routines for day surgery. Thank you very much, Carlo and Hugo. Good afternoon to all of you. And before I begin my, my last lecture in Budapest, I want to thank and congratulate Jamal, Maria, and all the Hungarian um, organizers for the wonderful meeting that we are attending uh, these days. So thank you very much for all of you. And as this topic and project is related to improving patient safety um, through day surgery, I thought that, uh, in fact, um, risk assessment should be an important topic to address in this session. Uh, especially if uh, we are to succeed in healthcare and especially in daycare programs. So the book, uh, To Hair is Human, published in 1999 by the Medicine Institute of the United States, was a reference in a major awareness for issues related to ambulatory surgery and to patient safety. The book was published after a study developed by the Harvard University in several US hospitals on death related to air in healthcare. Their numbers shocked governments, institutions, media, and health professionals by showing and quantifying the huge dimension of this problem. As you can see, death by error in the United States health system is double comparing to the figures for traffic accidents and mama cancer, and is about five-fold increase in relation to the numbers of AIDS. Those numbers were and are an alarming reference for governments and health professionals that led all to seek support and knowledge in other scientific fields in order to minimize those events and their consequences. So the industry, aviation, and nuclear engineering are among others fine examples of imported practice to improve patient safety in healthcare, as you can see in the, this slide. And as healthcare is being increased in complexity due to aging, techniques by themselves, our technology, or an increase in the turnover of patients and number of interventions trying to be more efficient, we might perspective an increase in errors if we don't improve a patient safety strategy. And clinical governance is a process by which healthcare organizations commit themselves in quality continuous improvement for their services, involving all members in a teamwork effort, what in fact we defend for our day surgery programs. Risk management, as you can see, is one of its pillars. Different organizations like the World Health Organization developed several initiatives in order to increase global patient safety as the clean care is a safer care, and safe surgery saves lives. More recently, the Luxembourg Declaration in 2005 recognizes that access to high quality healthcare as a fundamental citizen right that should be valued by the Un European Union and its institutions for all citizens in Europe. Another two good examples how Europe is focusing its health organizations on projects to improve patient safety throughout Europe are these ones that are presented here. Sympathy, safety improvement for patients in Europe, and UNET Pass, European Union Network for Patient Safety. And the same organization, the World Health Organization itself, behind all known campaigns launched in 2008, nine, sorry, the curriculum guide for medical schools to make sure that issues related to patient safety would be taught with the same weight and importance as the rest of the medical teaching. 
And 14 years after being published, the book Two Air is Human, the present scenario is still disturbing, even after several safety measures have been applied to healthcare. The classic model of Swiss cheese, often used to explain how, in a moment, an incident passes through several barriers with gaps related to organizational or human factor that line up and allow the event to occur. And as you can see from the paper published in JAMA in 2005 by these two authors, Lip and Berwick, 10% of inpatients suffer from an adverse event. And 40% of those adverse events are evitable. And the figures found by Lip and Bervik repeat themselves in several other studies, like the one performed by the Spanish Health Ministry in 2005, the NAR, or the Portuguese survey from 2009, conducted by the National School on Public Health. Moreover, this study, the Portuguese one, found that 60% had no important clinical consequence, but almost the same amount, sorry, 58.2 cause prolonged inpatient stay in 10.7 days. So bad systems, not bad people, led to most of the errors. A safety system assumes that anyone can err, and the system makes it up through an improvement continuous process. So it's not important to identify the person who did that, but the causes that made the adverse event possible to happen. And we also know that resources aren't accessible. Avoidable errors reflect avoidable costs, and costs not only expressed in errors, but mainly in direct effects to patients with an increase in morbidity, prolonged inpatient stay, or even life. Avoidable costs that reflect the non-compliance of the first Hippocratic commandment, primum non necessary, or in English, first do no harm. So, the message will be develop several strategies in order to increase patient safety, standardize your procedures, inform all your staff, review your results, update periodically your written information. Watch carefully to your results from time to time. An Yamatrix program is being developed in several Iberian University hospitals in Portugal and Spain. More than 30 includes uh, and, and are involved in this project that monitor different outcomes given the relative position of each hospital in comparison to the median of the hospital's group. You can see it is in Portuguese, but it is length of stay the waiting list, ambulatory surgery, mortality, complications, and readmissions. So in the following slides, I will give you examples of checklists that we routinely use in our hospital. This is a preoperative checklist where we do identify every patient. We do get informed consent we remove makeup, piercings, we identify increased risk factors, pacemaker holders, dental processes, contact lenses, the preoperative fasting policy that should be complied, and confirmation of surgery and place. Another example is the surgical safety checklist, and that in majority of countries, you have these forms uh, translated for your own language. And in anesthesia, as we are trying to increase uh, safety over our procedures, we have transport many of the technology and methodology used in air transport industry. We do have lots of checklists, like the reserve equipment and the, all the lists that you uh, are looking there uh, to, to see if everything is in the right place, right proper functioning for beginning the operating uh, case. Or even 
those other professionals, like scrub nurses, that do have additional sections for operating room equipment, or the emergent trolley checklist, to see if everything will be operable to, to start the cases, or pediatric trolley, or even difficult airway trolley checklist. So the National Quality Forum non-profit American company defined in 2008 that would be what would be a never event, that is an event that should never occur in healthcare. And never events, as you can go through the list, can and do occur easily or not in our institutions unless we develop safe procedures to avoid them. And in order to do it the right way and have a safe and happy end. So in the next four minutes, I will try to pass a video produced by Quentos, and I hope you will be more sensitized for this huge healthcare problem. So if this happened in U.S. hospitals, be sure that this happens in our hospitals as well. So thank you very much for your attention.